If you know or suspect that you're a BRCA gene carrier and want to lower your risk of cancer, then this video is for you. Dr. Amy here, and this is my promise to you. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to know about being a genetic carrier and what you can start doing today to lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence. If you know you have a gene like BRCA1 or BRCA2, or even if you have a strong family history of cancer, then you know you're at an increased risk of developing cancer. With an increased risk of developing cancer or cancer recurrence, then you want to do everything you can to lower your risk. The good news is, is that there are clear things that you can do to lower your risk of cancer through your food, your exercise, and your mindset. Let's dive in. Now, the most well-known gene that increases your risk of cancer is the BRCA mutation. This genetic mutation became very well-known after Angelina Jolie elected to have a preventative double mastectomy to lower her risk of cancer as a BRCA carrier. Without ever being diagnosed with cancer, she underwent a double mastectomy. But there are also many different types of genes that have been linked to increasing the risk of cancer. We all know BRCA1, BRCA2, but also CHECK2 and many, many other types of genes have been found to be linked to increasing your risk of cancer. So let's dive into exactly what you need to know. There are actually two different ways that a genetic mutation can occur. The first is hereditary. This is known as a germline mutation. These mutations happen in the sperm or the egg before you were ever even born. These mutations are passed down to you from your parents and possibly from you to your children. We know that 10% of women who develop cancer will have some kind of genetic mutation, but there are also genetic mutations that can happen spontaneously. Many forms of cancer can happen because of mutations that happen to genes over time. As the cells divide and replicate, there's more potential for errors to happen in the DNA of cells. This is why cancer most commonly occurs in older people. Most commonly, but not always. As we age, our cells divide and divide and divide, and there's more opportunities for errors to happen as they undergo this replication process. Now, DNA in our cells can be damaged in many different ways. Things like environmental exposure or eating heavily processed foods, drinking alcohol or smoking. These can all cause DNA damage in your cells, potentially leading to cancer. But we're gonna focus on these genetic mutations that are inherited. Now let's dive into how you can lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence as a genetic carrier. First, it's important to know that not everyone that has a genetic mutation will get cancer. It can sometimes feel like you're doomed, like you are just destined to eventually be diagnosed with cancer. But this is not the case. Now, if you have a genetic mutation, but you've never been diagnosed with cancer, then you may be familiar with the term provider. A provider is exactly like Angelina Jolie, someone who carries a genetic mutation but's never been diagnosed with cancer. Women with this background often undergo cancer-specific treatments or surgery strategies that leave them with the same long-term side effects as cancer survivors. For this exact reason, providers are always welcome here on my YouTube channel or in my Cancer Freedom Program. If you need support navigating life after learning you've had a genetic mutation, or if you need help recovering from a double mastectomy or a different type of treatment, then you are welcome to apply to the Cancer Freedom Program to work directly with me. Providers are welcome here. Okay, but what are some real and practical things you can start doing today to lower your risk of cancer or cancer recurrence as a genetic carrier? Let's start with monitoring. As a gene carrier, your monitoring should be more intensive than compared to someone who's not a gene carrier. With your healthcare team, you may decide on starting mammograms earlier than the age of 40. Your screening might include ultrasounds of your ovaries on a yearly basis. Now, while you may never be diagnosed with cancer as a genetic carrier, an earlier diagnosis often leads to better outcomes. So if we detect cancer at an earlier time, at an earlier stage, then your prognosis will be better. But for some women, monitoring is really terrifying. To undergo screening, well, that can be really anxiety provoking and terrifying, especially waiting for the results. But you want to know rather than keep your head in the sand. The sooner you know, the sooner you can do something about it. Then the more likely it is you can save your life. 
Now, you might be thinking, if you carry a gene and you're known to have an increased risk of cancer, then why not just put you on a medication or something to lower your risk of cancer before it actually happens? Well, a study looked at exactly this. They looked at whether women who carry a gene or are at a high risk of developing cancer should be placed on a medication to lower their risk of cancer before they're ever diagnosed. If we know your risk of cancer is higher, then let's put you on this medication and potentially save the trouble of being diagnosed. Well, here's what they found out. Postmenopausal women who were at a higher risk of developing cancer, they were put on a drug called anastrozole. Now they followed these women for 10 years and found that if they were taking anastrozole, it actually lowered their risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer by 49%. Wow. That sounds amazing, right? But let's dig a little deeper. We do know that anastrozole has some pretty serious side effects. Women struggle with hot flashes, joint pain, weight gain. Now, some women do cope really well with the side effects and others really struggle. And when we look at the numbers closer, we realize maybe they're not as great as we first expected. Yes, it did lower the risk of breast cancer by 49%. But when we look at the exact numbers, this means that 85 women in the treatment group had breast cancer and 165 women in the placebo group had breast cancer. So the actual number of women total was not very big. Although it does look promising, there are some things to consider. So this is something you might want to discuss with your healthcare team. Okay, but on to the next option, surgery. Of course, a double mastectomy and a hysterectomy can lower your risk of cancer, but these are life altering procedures. It's something to consider, but this would be a serious decision for you. I support you either way, but as a gene carrier, there's also smaller things you can start doing today to make a massive impact in lowering your risk of cancer. The first is to use targeted exercise. We know that exercise can lower your risk of cancer by up to 59%. That's huge. We wanna start doing that today. Here's how. Now, targeted exercise is a combination of strength training and cardio. Strength training should be full body and you should do two to three sessions per week for at least 20 minutes each time. A good option for strength training would be to just use your body weight. Cardio should be low to moderate intensity and you should aim for 150 to 300 minutes per week. A good option for cardio would be walking. The next thing that you need to consider is to maintain a healthy body weight. There is well established literature to support this, although it may be really uncomfortable to face. As a cancer survivor myself, I gained 20 pounds during my cancer treatment. I knew that extra weight was increasing my risk of cancer or cancer recurrence, so I needed to find strategies to help get that weight off. Now, as gene carriers, your food is really important. We know that genetic carriers will actually benefit from increasing the amount of phytoestrogens or soy in their diet. Now, it was once believed that soy, because it's a phytoestrogen, would increase the amount of hormones in your body and actually increase your risk of breast cancer. But this, has long been disproven. We now know that eating more soy, especially as a genetic carrier, will lower your risk of cancer or cancer recurrence. Now, of course, you wanna select minimally processed or unprocessed soy, but this is similar to how you would eat other foods as well. Now, if you're a genetic carrier, I want you to know that you're not alone. There are other women here and in the Cancer Freedom Program that are navigating the exact same thing as you. But the good news is, is that you have the power to lower your risk of cancer and make those changes. You can get started right now. That's exactly why I'm linking up this next video for you here on targeted exercise. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.